It's Donald Trump looking out for Donald Trump. It's a once in a lifetime occurrence. I don't know that I agree with you to be to be uh, fair with all due respect. Uh, one doesn't have to be brilliant to attempt a coup. Uh, I disagree with that as somebody who has helped plan coup d'etat. Yeah. Not here, but, you know, other places. Uh, it takes a lot of work. And that's not what he did. It was just stumbling around from one idea to another. Ultimately, he did unleash the rioters at the Capitol. As to that, there's no doubt. But not to overthrow the Constitution, to buy more time to throw the matter back to the states to try and redo the issue. And if you don't believe that, you're going to overreact. And I think that's a real risk for the committee, which has done a lot of good work, mostly when the witnesses testify, not when the members are opining. Uh, it is invariably the case that when you go too far trying to prove your case, you undermine it. And I think you've got to give credit to the intelligence of the American people to listen to the witnesses and let them come to the conclusion. And I think the uh, fellow who had actually gone into the Capitol who said today that he had blinders on and he was too loyal to one person, that is the central point. I, I do want to ask a follow-up. Um, when we were talking about what is capable, what you need to do to be able to plan a coup, and you, you cited your expertise having planned coups. I'm not going to get into the specifics, but... Uh, Successful coups? Well, I wrote about Venezuela in, uh, in the book, and uh, it, it turned out not to be successful. Not that we had all that much to do with it, but I saw what it took for an opposition to try and overturn an illegally elected president, and they failed. The notion that Donald Trump was half as competent as the Venezuelan opposition is laughable. But I think there's another. I feel like you're this other stuff you're not telling me, though. I think I'm sure there is. I think there's another point.